Hello, welcome to Dazzlius, learning the language of autism. Belle here. So welcome to chapter three of our series of routines and autism. Um, always when I'm thinking about the things I'm going to talk about, there's just so much detail we could go into. But I like to try and make these videos as informative but as clear as I can without too much because it's just so many layers to things. So this week, purely because it's something that's just happened fresh in our house to do with routines this morning. So I just thought that this would be a really good <laughs> opportunity <laughs> to talk about something that's happened in our house, um, which really explains what I wanted to talk about this week, which is what we call the depths of some routines and we call them grooves. There's some routines you will find with your children or the people that you care for, but some routines can seemingly be easy to be changed and there can be flexibility within those routines. Some of those routines will be absolutely not. They will be really difficult um, and almost impossible for your autistic child, person that you're caring for, to step out of their normal routine and either change it completely or change it a little bit. And we call them grooves. So depending how deep the groove is of that routine will depend on how flexible that the autistic person can be in either changing it or just completely like, tweaking it or completely changing it. And you're not going to know these things until you find that you either try to change it for whatever reason or there's no choice and a routine has to be changed. Which can cause, you know, interesting outcomes. <laughs> so what happened this morning um, in the night, there must have been a power cut or something because our alarm did not go off this morning at quarter to seven um, has expected to go to school. So what happened was I awoke thinking that I had some time before the alarm went off. Then I kind of realised, actually, this doesn't feel right. Looked at my clock and it was 20 past eight. We normally leave to get to school by 25 to nine. Now, often when we're late, it happens. We can get up. A neurotypical person could get up be like fumbling around, grab a quick cup of coffee or tea or whatever you drink, get dressed and make some toast or something, eat it in the car or on the way and get there as near to your time as possible. But with, with the routine that happens in the morning for George, he has a school routine. Get it up in the morning and a morning routine, which doesn't entail just getting up, having breakfast, getting dressed and getting in the car. It entails um, getting up, having a bath in a set routine and then coming into the kitchen, then having his breakfast in a set routine, then looking at, he has like photos, like um, real photos which we use for his um, visual board of places that we go and people that we see and he since all this change with the lockdown and everything and everything so different he has decided one of the things he's needed during to, to be able to cope is have the photographs in a particular cupboard in the kitchen at all times and so now he's turned that into one of his routines where he will take all the pictures out of the cupboard and he will look at them one by one and flick them back into the cupboard. Now, he has to do that three times in a routine and each set of pictures, there's about 20 pictures. So you can imagine it takes a bit of time. So each session takes a good 10, 15 minutes and then he'll do that, then he'll put lights on, and then he'll go around again, and then he'll do it again, and then he'll put more lights on, and then he'll go around and he'll do it again. He does it three times. And 
Um, then he drinks his drink, then he has some cream, and then he puts some cream on his hands, he gets like dry hands, and then he has a, a 10 minute on his sensory iPad, and then we go and we brush teeth, then we can get him dressed. But all these things take longer because of his sensory needs and you know George does a lot of um, stims and ticks so you know and some of those you know that they just add on each one adds on seconds and sometimes minutes and so that you know getting dressed can take five minutes but for George it could take 10 minutes 15 minutes so all these things add time so our morning routine needs an hour and a half before he can leave the house now I have tried to change that by taking some of the pictures away and has, so he's got less pictures to look at, which means less time it will take. In the past, I've been able to do that, but recently, no, I can't do that. He's had such a major change with the school routine being different, us being in lockdown, um, his dad dying in January was a massive, humongous change for both of us. So ever since then, he has kind of locked down himself with stricter routine needs, which makes absolutely perfect sense. He's trying to create more order and stability in a massive hole that has been left by his dad passing away predominantly. And then, of course, being in lockdown. So overall, he's doing incredibly well. And I'm so proud of him. So this video really is about what happens. This is a big groove. This is a deep groove for George. This morning routine and looking at his photographs is a very, very, very deep groove. I've discovered because when I try to hide some of the photographs just so there was less um he really couldn't cope and that manifested in um him dressed you know sort of frantically looking for those pictures in the places that he thought they might be and he was looking everywhere then he would you know, find it so difficult in his brain because he's just, it's changed, he's changed everything for him in that morning routine. He just, you know, went into a complete sort of shutdown, which looks like he will lay on the floor, his fingers will go in his ears, his eyes will close and he is frozen. So he just doesn't know what to do. He cannot cope. He's, there's no, I've taken the, you know, by doing that, I've completely left him in no man's land of I don't know what to do now I don't know where to pick up from I've got no anchor everything's different and I, and I just can't function and it's really big and it's really serious and it's really it's real it's genuine it has nothing to do with being naughty or it's not bad behavior it's not being um any of those words that often are used when People are talking about children being, having behavioural problems or being uh, difficult or challenging. It's, it's none of those things. This is not a behavioural, I'm going to do this because I want to get my own way. It's not that. This, this is not that. A meltdown and a shutdown and a need to have these routines, which is why I'm doing these video series, is because I really want to get across that, you know, so many of autistic people's behaviours and needs are misunderstood, or they're either misunderstood completely by neurotypical people, because we just can't get into the head or understand that perspective, or some of the attitudes are well, you know, life just isn't like that. You're just going to have to like flow with everybody else and get used to it. So they foolishly um, and cruelly think that you can manipulate 
and ignore every need that an autistic person has just because it inconveniences your life or uh, a setting's life or a situation. Um, oh, it's seen as, you know, bad, naughty, inappropriate, challenging, aggressive, just all those other things that it just isn't. It just isn't. It can turn that way when a person is consistently not honoured and recognised as having genuine needs, like we all do. Um, I think anybody would blow in the end. So that's why I do these videos, is to really help neurotypical people, professionals, carers, parents, family members, to really understand and accept that a lot of autistic behaviours well, all of autistic behaviours, there's always a reason. There's a meaning, a valid, genuine reason. Just because you may not be able to understand it doesn't mean it isn't real for that person. And routines are very, very important to uh, you know most autistic people, one way or the other. We, we all, all humans like routine to, us, to an extent. It's just that the difference can be that a neurotypical person can be more flexible and can adjust to change a lot quicker and easier. An autistic person often cannot. No, no matter how much you might want that to be different, often they cannot. And there are a million trillion different reasons for those. And I'm just touching on a very, very small few reasons from our own home life's perspective and just from a few other things that other autistic people have told me that I just throw into the mix. So as an example of changing something completely, um, on another Facebook group, um, which I'm a member of and which is run by autistic people, it's amazing, it's Autism Inclusivity. Um, they have some really great posts on there. I highly recommend if you are caring or a parent or a family member of an autistic person in your life to um, ask if you can join this group because it's run by autistic people and they are full of amazing generous input and advice and support um i strongly recommend this group anyway um one of the questions was can you name a film or um with aut about autistic people or with autistic people or actors that are autistic that's your favorite what's your favorite film and there are so many which i didn't realize how many there were but one of them which seemed to be a very popular one was is called mozart and the whale and I haven't been able to see the whole film yet because I can't purchase it for some reason. It's currently unavailable. But I've watched some clips on YouTube. And one of the clips that I watched was, um, there's, the two, there's, two, there's many characters, but this one's about the two characters. They're both autistic and both verbal, autistic, very different, manifest in a very different way. And there's kind of like a love story going on between them. It's very sweet. And the scene is that she, the girlfriend, who is autistic, thought he's, the boyfriend's house or apartment is just like from, is a, a mess. There's just stuff everywhere. It looks chaotic. It looks messy. There's clothes all over the floor. There's washing up everywhere. There's books all over the place. It looks like it's untidy and chaotic. So she thinks she's being a good girlfriend and being loving and helpful. So she decides why he's out to tidy up his apartment. So the scene is he walks in. She's all pleased with herself because she's done something loving. He walks in and as soon as he walks in, he just sees his home, his safe place, looking completely different. Feeling different, looking different, smelling different. Everything's different. And he just completely cannot cope he just you know it really distresses him deeply and she's like he's like how could you do this to me and she's she says well I, I was doing something nice I thought I was helping you out and he said you have completely taken my whole life away from me and it's that that's how real and intense it can be if you start to mess or change or take away an autistic person's routines safety nets ways they in which they like things done 
you know it's it's a real genuine deep rooted thing so I hope I've got that across um, a lot of it is to do with sensory processing executive functioning and also you know also a person's right to be able to have things the way they want them and need them to be um, you know there, that is a big factor so that meant this morning that we were going to be very very late for school so because I know I can't rush that routine along I can give him little cues and say because he's very easily distracted oh come along George like, remember we're going to school but if I sh if I give him any more than that and I stress him and I put pressure because this routine is a deep groove he will shut down and he'll need time to readjust to what I've just said to him and the stress that that causes, which can add on another five, ten minutes, which means we're going to be even later. So I know this routine in the morning is a deep groove and a deep groove means don't try and get in the middle of that routine because you're going to be waiting longer. And, you know, he's a 15 year old, strong, big lad. So you can't, you can't take things, stop things from happening. It's, it's just learning to adjust. So luckily his school is very understanding. He goes to a special school. So I phoned them and I said, you know, we're not going to be at school until half past 10. At first I said, oh, so is, is he not going to come today then? And I was like, no, he's coming. <laughs> because changing that, because the pictures have been up all week, he knows his school routine, he only goes three days a week at the moment. If I then suddenly said to him, we're not going to school today, um, that would that would just not, oh my goodness, I can't even tell you the stress and anxiety and chaos that that would cause. Um and although we were late, an hour and a half late, it's better to be an hour and a half late than to not go at all. So, um, if, you know, of course, there are situations in life when sometimes there is absolutely nothing that the parent or carer can do to change a situation. If school had suddenly phoned up and said, we're shut today, you can't come, then I would have to, and George would have to suck that up, and we would have a day that would be very challenging and very difficult and full of, deep 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 distress and there are times when that does happen of course there are but what the way I view it as his mother and as a sensitive human being and from learning about autism about autism from many autistic people I'm really understanding from a compassionate heart that because I know that there are things that happen that you have no control over they're going to happen in life and they cause enough anxiety as it is. There are many things in George's day that cause him anxiety and sensory overload um, and deep distress. So why consistently cause someone that you know already struggles with daily life because of sensory needs and various other things? I believe that when there are things that you can bend and flex and negotiate, why wouldn't you do that? To help out your person in your life that you love and care for who is autistic. It's about honouring their needs and you do the best. And do you know what? I think it's a great lesson for everyone else in their lives, you know? Like to be more compassionate and more flexible in your neurotypical way because it's all well and good saying, oh, autistic people aren't very flexible. They only really like strict routines. Yet the neurotypical people are going to be unwilling to show that flexibility when their autistic friends are saying, I need it done this way. And the autistic, the neurotypical person's going, no, 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 we're not going to allow you to do that. That in itself is saying that you can't be flexible. So it's about all humans being able to meet in the middle and help each other out as best you can. And... There are routines that are deep grooves like the morning one and there are other routines that are not very deep grooves and they can be tweaked and they or they can be changed or they can be negotiated, which I will talk about next week. 
So um, that's this week's video about deep, an example of a deep groove routine. And, you know, if you try and change a deep groove routine, you're going to come up against resistance massively or complete shutdown or meltdown. There are videos which I will put the links on at the end of this video if I can um, of um, other autistic people that talk about sensory processing and executive functioning far better than I ever could. So if I, if I remember, if I don't put it, if it doesn't come up on my video, it will be in the description. I'll put links up because they're brilliant. And exec executive functioning and sensory processing are something that I recommend all parents, carers, or anyone that's watching this that is learning about autism, please research it, study it, and look it up because it is a major part of most autistic people's makeup and being and brain functioning. And if you can understand executive functioning and what that entails and what it means and sensory processing and what that means, then you will have a better understanding of your autistic child person in your life. Okay, so next week I will be talking about routines again and the reasons why grooves happen and how they can manifest and much, much more. So much to talk about routines. So thank you for watching. Please do subscribe and um, I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Have a good week. Lots of love.